Hello YouTube friends, welcome back to another video in the channel. So my name is Dennis. Into this video, we're going to be looking into a tool that I've been playing around for the last couple of weeks now. This tool is called Databar. If you need something for lead generation or if you want to perform some web scraping or anything that has to do with data collection, this tool provides you with over a thousand integrations for data sources, APIs, and it gives you this spreadsheet interface where you can collect data and push into your CRM or do some automation since it has some built-in automation as part of the, the platform. I'm going to do a deep dive of Databar and showcase all the different functionalities that you can ever think of. If you have any questions about any specific things or you're not clear about it, please leave it in the comments. Let's go ahead and talk about what it is and what it isn't. Uh, Databar is a data collection tool. It's not meant to replace Google Sheet, but if you want to, you, you definitely can do that. But I don't think it was intended for that purposes. The whole point of Databar is to collect uh, data from any of the data sources that's available either from uh, within their API network or from your own uh, API. So if they don't have any integration or partnership with that uh, particular uh, API, you can always feel free to add your own uh, data and add it into the platform. So let's take a look at the different use case that's available for Databar. So if you're in sales and marketing, if you need to generate some leads for your product, if you're not trying to make some sales, uh, you can use Databar, you can use Google Maps, or you can use LinkedIn or any of the data source that's available within Databar. If you're in HR, you're trying to recruit for new talents and you're trying to post in job boards and you're trying to build up your database to reach out to prospect for new employees, then it's also great for this type of use case. There's also some web scraping that's also built in within a data bar that you can also use as well as they have a Chrome extension if you want to do some manual web scraping on your own, which is pretty handy. So I'm going to be showing you guys how to use the web scraping tool within Chrome extension. Finance, you have access to livestock information. They have a bunch of uh, providers that provides data for stock and portfolio trackers, as well as crypto. E-commerce, there's Amazon. You can pull data from Amazon for your products and do some com comparative between the different products that's out there and pull the different data. So maybe you will need that data for your e-commerce business or you want some real-time information about the price changes for a product. So there's a bunch of different use cases that you can uh, use data, data bar for. It's an all-in-one platform. Everything is under one umbrella. You're going to have access to this data source and you're going to have the same spreadsheet feel as Google Sheet. Aside from being able to pull from the different API connectors, you can also push into a CRM or a Google Sheet or whatever type of database that you have, SQL Server or Postgres, so, since it has APIs built in and also it has its, in, its own automation built as part of the Databar platform. So we're going to go and explore a lot of these things. Just want to give you a high level here from their homepage. Let's take a look at the API network. So if you're going to a data bar, uh, you can do an explore of their APIs that's available uh, within their API network. Uh, let's take a look at some of these. Uh, some of them doesn't require an authorization. The CoinGecko, for instance, data provider doesn't have any authorization required. You can just access data without having to provide any API key. There's one right here by Outscraper where it costs 0.15 to pull and extract data from that provider. And there's also one where it's auth required. So if you go to one of these, this one requires an API key and this is not part of the network within Databar. So you have to provide your own key if you want to access uh, the data from within LinkedIn Sales Navigator Exporter. The API network can vary depending on what you're trying to access and what type of provider uh, you're getting their data uh, from. So it could be from Yelp where it could cause uh, 0.2 credits or it could be within Hacker News where it's free. Or you can also do YouTube comments as well. So there's a bunch of data here that you can access. The credits going to vary. The authorization and how you access that data will also vary just depending on the provider. Feel free to take a look at the different categories that's available here. But let's take a look at data bar itself once you're logged in. I went ahead and log in into my account. So let's take a look at uh, the different things that you have here. So I'm inside of Coding Menace uh, workspace. You can create a different workspace for your, for a separate establishment or agency if you want to separate tables within uh, different accounts. So first thing that you're going to be seeing here is the different tabs that's available on the top. 
So we're going to be focusing on the, the, the left hand side and we're going to take a look at the right hand side. There's the tables and also the charts that's available and also the integrations. You can search your existing tables. So here's the list of all the tables that I have created in my account. I've been playing around with different data sources within data bar already. So I have all these tables that you can access it by clicking on one of these. Uh, you can see here that there's also this like rainbow looking star where you can actually click on these and this will pin that table right on the top. So you can, it's always available for you much easier that way. You can also select uh, any of these table if you want to delete any of these in bulk if you want to delete all these uh, different tables you know can just delete it and delete it that way so that's for the tables part of it uh, we're going to go in, into more details as to what's available within a table that, since that's going to be uh, where the majority of the things that are that you know things that you do in data bar is going to be in let's explore the charts this is the charts that i've created uh, within data bar and you can explore and this will pop up into a new page you can see that uh, you know, this, this is the, you can create charts here using the data within your table. We're going to explore that a little bit more later. Just kind of give you a high level here. The third tab here is where integration is. This is where you can access your API key to be able to access the data bar API from an external you know, client. For instance, if you're building a, an app or if you have um, on a, on automation uh, that you're trying to pull the data from data bar, you can use the data bar API key and you can also do a reset. You can see that um, I have some authorized APIs here at the bottom. This is the connectors where you can uh, do an export. Uh, I have it connected to my HubSpot CRM where I can push the data. Uh, I'm going to be showing you guys how it works uh, as well. Uh, since you can push the data from the table in your data bar account into an external CRM such as HubSpot. So you can also define your own custom APIs as well. So you can see here that I've labeled my APIs accordingly based on the, the use case. I'm doing an exporter here, which I'm pushing the data out from the bar. And there's also the custom enrichment API as well, where I'm pulling the data from a custom webhook. In this case, I'm using Active Pieces. So this is the URL for the custom AI webhook that I have set up here with additional parameters. We're going to go over some of these in a little bit more details later on. All these APIs are labeled accordingly based on what it is. There's no confusion on, on what type of API you're using that API is for. I have here exporter, enrichment, and then two enrichment here at the bottom. I, I can delete that as well. You can also create, add new custom API by clicking on this plus right here at the bottom where you can define whether it's an enrichment or an exporter or data sender. And then there's some additional settings as, as well, which we're going to be go going over in a little bit. Let's take a look at the tables and start off from the basics. Let's focus on the right hand side. So you can do a search here for an available API within the data bar network. Uh, you can search if you already know what type of data source are you going to be starting off in the beginning when you create your table. You can start from an existing data source or you can also start with a blank table. You can see here that there's a blank table available and there's also an option from a CSV from an existing custom webhook, any of these available uh, data sources. And there's also this option where you can start up with a template. They, they only have a couple here for now, but this will get, provide you with a good starting point uh, as far as the layout of the table that you're going to be creating. I suggest uh, starting out with a blank table, start from an, an existing data source such as Google. You can do a search here. Let's say you want to do a Google Maps a review scraper. So you can start out by Google and all the Google related data sources going to be coming up here when you do a search and you can start out with any of these data sources. All these data sources have their own sets of columns. So they have different providers. It'll give you a little bit of description here what the data source is going to be about. Let's start off by creating a new table based on an existing data source. So let's look for Google. Let's look for Google Maps, a scraper, start with that. So this will have a predefined data source available already. But we know obviously with options where, where you can set the locations and also it will have the tables already set up, such as the name, full address here in the city, country and so forth. So these columns available here are specific to the data that's coming back from this data source provider. So when you first uh, are creating uh, from an existing data source already, you have an option here where you can set the authorization. So you can either use your own authorization or API key 
or for the convenience factor, you can use the data bars API credit as well. So this is going to be deducting from your credits within data bar. You don't have to provide your own API key. You have access to these data source providers without having to worry about your API key. Everything's in one place. So we're going to use a data bar key as we don't have an API key from Google. So that's going to be the first step. And the second step here is going to be very depending on the provider that you've selected. Some of these parameters is going to change depending on the data source that you've selected. So in this case, I've, I'm using the Google Maps. They're only allowing you to set certain parameters such as the number of locations. It will also give you some description here of, of what the parameter is about and also the search query. So let's say I want to look for a real estate companies within New York. So I can specify that here. And then the region is by default set to US, but you can obviously set it to different region. That you, uh, one thing that I also want to point out here is you can also do an automation when you first uh, create this uh, table. You can also change this later on if you decide that you want to uh, automate this where it will just automatically collect data on your behalf without having you to touch this. So you can also do that. You can build a robust um, automation system where you can run this automatically. And then you have an automation somewhere where it would pull the data from data bars API, and then it will just push it out into the various CRM or data collection system that you already have somewhere, such as Google Sheet or whatever. So you can set the frequency to every month or however you want to create this. There's also this Chrome expression here where you can set if you have some custom ones that doesn't fit any of these frequency or schedule, then you can create a custom cron expression. There's also an option when every time you run this automation, you can erase and replace, meaning that uh, whenever this automation runs, uh, it will just remove all the data and then it will replace it with a new one. Or you can also add to an existing, so it will just keep adding to an, the existing uh, rows of uh, records that you have. So you have an option to run it automatically, but that's an, uh, that's an automation feature that's available when you create a data source. You can see here that the cost for this run is going to cost me 1.5 per run based on the parameters that I've set here. For these options that are provided above for the numbers of loca locations, this is going to be the credits it's going to cost me. I believe if you set this to a, a higher number, let's say you set it up to 500 for this data source, you can see the amount of credits that is required to run this is going to cost me 75 credits. So. The credits is something that you're going to be knowing ahead of time before you run this query. So there's no surprises there as how much it's going to cost you. So if you put this into 50, this is going to automatically just reflect that. So I believe let's go back to 10 and this will only run us 1.5 credits. So let's run this query. Actually, before we do that, uh, let's inspect some of the different field options that's available to have this name field, full address, city, all these uh, columns are sp specific to this Google Maps scraper, and this is mapped accordingly based on the data set that's returned from that data source. Let's take a look at the different options here. You can edit the field, you can change the name. This one is set to a field type of text. So all these different options are available for the field type if you want to be more specific and granular as to what uh, type of uh, field type are you, you're currently working with. So there's date and date time. If you want to include a timestamp, there's a Boolean for true and false. And then JSON, uh, it, if you want to use uh, an external API source, uh, usually when you make a request to an API, it's going to give you back a JSON, which we can set an a JSON here as a field type for this field. There's also option for link for URLs, uh, for currency, phone, images. So there's a little bit of visualization where if this is an image URL, you'll be able to preview what that image is going to look like. There's also the number, multiple choice and select. So you can have a set of options here where you can select one and then multiple choice where you can select multiple ones, emails, special field for LinkedIn, and then also long text for anything that's longer. I don't know what the, the actual limitation is between the text and the long text. So if you have anything that's long, for instance, like a description for a company, you probably want to choose something like long text. It will just vary depending on type of the data that you're working with. So you're going to have to make sure that it's not being truncated. So if it's going to be long, then you probably want to pick something like a long text. So let's cancel this and let's run this query. So 
So now you can see the indicator uh, at the bottom, it says it's daily loading. There's also an option to cancel as well. But there's also different options here as far as uh, the views. We can view only the rows with errors. So for instance, later on, if you're doing some data enrichment and one of the rows had some errors on it, you can see the rows that has an error. And then so you can hone in into those records and figure out what's going on with them. And then also the successful rows only. So let's take a look at the, the indicator here at the bottom where it says data loaded successfully. So you can see the, the status for that request that I just made when I filled out this table with some data. This one uh, is for the Google Maps Scraper Enrichment or API that I'm using. This completed and this is the cost, how much it costed me to perform that action. There's also here the different inputs that are provided for this query and also the details and the start time and then the ex execution time in seconds. You can use this for debugging purposes. So you can see the history and how much credit it took to run that call to an external API. That's how it, one way you can debug this. And then like I pre previously mentioned, you can select the rows with errors. In this case, I don't have anything. By default, it will just show all the different rows available. And then also on the other hand, you can also show the rows that has been successful or rows with no data. You have this different views option and you can also do some filtering as well. So based on the columns that you have available, you can also take a look at the name, but you can also check for anything that has, let's say for instance, the full address that's not empty. So let's say you just want to filter those ones and just want to get those address with an address on it. So you can do some filtering option here. You can compound these the different uh, filters and add different ones uh, you can do. And this and additional filters of that. So remove that. And also the option to hide. Since this is a custom data source, you have the ability to hide certain data. For instance, I don't want to see the country since I already know where it's coming from. It's going to be in the United States. So I don't need to see that. If I use a scroll bar at the bottom where you can go and scroll from left to right. So I can go and use that to navigate this and go from left to right and see all the different columns here. And there's quite a bit of columns available in this uh, table for this data set and it only costs me 1.5 credit. So for this amount of data, there's quite a bit of data that's in it. So you can see the phone number, the website, what city, the address. See, if you're trying to find a realtor in New York City, you can use this information for anything related to your business. So you can see here that there's a photo options. We can see that this is particular field is using the display of image. This is a field type of image. You can also just change the display to a link since it's really an external link to an image source. Since we have this image option, you can see here that you can visualize that you know, particular image and give you that image. And then there's a bunch of different data here that you can use really if you're looking for a real estate agency. You can see here the working hours. You can see here that this one is set to a JSON. Uh, this JSON includes all these different uh, properties within it. So you also have an option here. Uh, let's take a look at a different one. For instance, this about where it has this accessibility and service options property. You can drill into the different properties within that JSON where there's additional properties here with additional JSON object. But you can set this to a different columns as well. So uh, you can also extract any of these properties to a, a new column as well. So let's say for the accessibility, let's say I want to see this. This one is called accessibility, I believe already or about. OK, you can extract this one. So let's say I want to extract this one into a new column since I don't want to look at the JSON every single time. I can set this to a new column within, within this table and it's going to push that accessibility into a new column within this table. So you take it to the left and it's going to get and load that, that information out in just that property into that new field. You have all these different options and see here, what else can we do here? This link here where it provides you a link to an actual uh, word that review is. So that's going to be that for creating a table from an existing uh, data source. Uh, let's start a new one from scratch. Let's take a look at the different ways you can import data into your table inside of data bar we looked at importing data from an existing data source such as a google Maps scraper but let's start where we're going to be pulling the data from our own data source let's take a look at that option let's click on new blank you can upload your own csv as well as you can also push data into data bar using this webhook feature when you click on that webhook it's going to give you this unique 
webhook URL where now you can push data into it. Um, now you have the column one and two, let's push some information. So I've set some parameters in Postman so that I can push to this webhook. Let's copy that. I already have my API key in Postman provided. So I went ahead and added that into my headers. I, I actually, I put it in the parameters here. Let's actually copy that. We're gonna have to provide it inside of this query params. I'm just gonna copy my existing API key and let's push that in. And in the body, I'm just gonna push in the first name, last name and email. So let's actually, let's add that in here. Let's edit this so we can accommodate for those columns. So in our case, we'll just make it complicated just, just to keep it conventional based. So we'll just add and change the column into last name. We're gonna leave it as field type of text. And then we're just gonna set the column three as email and this, we're just gonna leave it as email type of text right now. So it's mapped into all these different uh, columns uh, that we're gonna be pushing here. Let's select all the records and just delete. Since in the beginning, you're gonna get uh, 10 blank records. So we're just gonna get, just, just remove all those. So let's test out this web hook, but it's just pushing some data into it. So let's send this data. We have to make a post request since we're passing in some data uh, as part of the body using uh, JSON. So there's no content. Let's refresh. The data that, that, that I just pushed just right now is now available for me to, to map into the columns that I have here on my table. So I'm going to be mapping it now by clicking on this drop down here and it's going to be mapping it. So let's say for this one, email corresponds to the email and then the last name is now corresponds to the last name and the first name. Right. I can install those three columns, those mappings into this. And now that webhook is now available for me to use anywhere, either from my automation tool or some client application where I need to push data into this table. And I can also rename this table to something, for instance, I don't know, employees. So I can do that here. So let's push the data. So right now we don't have any data. Let's push this one. Our webhook is ready. Instantly you see that the data uh, has been automatically just been uh, populated in this table with the first name, last name, and email information. So let's take advantage of this function formulas right here. You can merge or, or concatenate columns where it, you can combine two columns into one. So let's do that. So the way you can do that is, let's say you wanted to combine the first name and the last name. Let's put that together and that will combine the first name and last name together separated by a space and now you can run this column it's almost like an enrichment where you have to run it so now you can run it on all the records that you have in this table or you can run it in individually for this one so when you run this it's going to combine the first name and the last name here so you see the joe romo here would be the full name for this person and also now you can edit this field and rename this to just the name so there's also some math functions here if else condition you can set it to any value based on a condition if this is equals to that but you can set a new column here to whatever value that you want based on a condition so you can also do that as well and also there's some other functions that's going to be coming up soon such as sending an email when something happens split columns into different ones as well so that's going to be coming up in the future a few things I want to mention here, you can also like do some sorting here. You can do some filtering as well. I think I showed you a little bit of how filter works in the previous segment, but you can filter here, you can run the enrichment. So we can also toggle the visibility of each column. Let's say you want to add by default, updated at is invisible. So if you want to show that you can also change the, vis the visibility, you can add new columns. We're going to take a look at the sharing uh, feature in a little bit once we have a bit more tangible data to work with. Let's go back to the main screen so we see all the different tables. So let's create, start from an existing data source. So let's start with an Indeed. Uh, this is the only one that we, we've got. So let's start with that and pull this in. Yeah, so for when you first create this, you're going to see here that it's different when you're first creating uh, a new a table from scratch compared to creating a table with an existing data source. So now it's obviously the data here. This is specific to the data source for Indeed Job Scraper. And now you have different parameters here on how to run this query. You have to specify the job title since it's required. And also they have a description here as well. So it's going to give you a blurb here of what the option 
is about. It looks like you're going to have to specify the actual job title. For instance, I want to look for a software engineer position in New York. We can plug that in. And then we can also change the job age when it was posted. So that's one of the options here. So by default, I think it's three. We can change it to just anything that's just been posted within a day. By default, it's United States. So if you live somewhere else, you might pick something else, but I'm going to leave it as United States. And also you can set the number of pages to retrieve and you give you some options here as far as, as, far as automation, which we discussed earlier already. If you want to run this on an automatic basis based on this frequency, let's you specified here. And then you can build an automation system around this to pull this data. It will give you all the cost for running this query based on the parameters that you provided. So for instance, if I want to retrieve multiple pages that obviously is going to cost more credit and the amount to, to run this specific query is going to cost you three credits based on the number of pages that are provided here, right? So let's just go back to one, let's run this. And like previously, it will have predefined column definitions, the job title, the company name, location. So these data source are already mapped into these specific columns with specific field types. So it has the publish date, it has the job link information, and then the job indeed ID. So let's just wait till it finished loading the data set. So after some time, you get the data result here. You get like 15 result. I believe this is specific to the, the data provider. So per page, it's pulling in 15 records for that. It has the job title and the job ID. You can see here the job link is not really fully what we want, but we're going to take care of that in a little bit as we pull this into an automation tool in act to pieces. So let's just examine the, the, the data here for now. So after we have the data, so we have the company name, location and publish date. Maybe we want to take a look at what the company is about. We want to research each of these companies like Squarespace. What is it about? So let's go ahead and introduce a new concept here, which is uh, data enrichment. We want to add additional information here pertaining to any of these columns that we have here. Let's add a data enrichment and we can do that by clicking on add new column and we can do a connect to live data source. And you can go to any of these connectors that's available here. In which case we want to look for the company details. We want to pass in the company name. Let's take a look at what's available here. This company information here that we can take a look at. View all, get company data from link. Get company, let's see, LinkedIn company profile scraper. So there's a bunch of stuff here like get company logos, get company by, by data, by link or name. Let's take a look at this one right here. It looks like you can provide the company name so let's do that let's see how this one works and you can see that you can also bring in additional columns as part of this enrichment but you can bring in the description of the company you can bring in the logo the company address how many employees the twitter link inform any inter interesting information that we can pull as part of this uh, table data set is acquired founders we want to bring that in maybe summary just kind of give us a better understanding what the company is about maybe Let's bring in the CEO, no, CEO name as well. And for this enrichment, uh, it's going to cost three credits. Let's add nine columns to this since we picked nine columns as part of this enrichment. And we can run this for all of them by clicking on the actual header of the column. Or we can just enrich for this specific record. Let's run that. So it brought back the description of the company. It, br it brought back the logo. It also scroll this to the right, but you can see that you get, you get back to address, the number of employees, the Twitter link, the website, there's no founders, but it, that's fine. And the CEO information, our CEO name here. So now we have a little bit more in, information related to this company. We can understand the company a bit more. Maybe if you're looking for a job, if you want to do a little bit more digging into what this company is about, who the CEO is, maybe go to Twitter. So let's run this for all these records. I, I just did that just to test it out. Just make sure that it's, it's working properly. Let's run this for all of the records that we have here. So now it's populating all the records. It's bringing back the logos, the description for this company and so on and so forth. It says right here, 14 records have been enriched. 
let's take a look at some interesting records here. Last requested records. We can see the data logs here of what happened and whether we pulled up some data from somewhere or we did some data enrichment. The last one that we just did was completed. And then this is the enrichment name information and then how much it costs us to run that enrichment. And then also it tells you the execution time in seconds and the start time. So there's some valuable information here as far as what transpired when we pulled some data from an external data source, just in case we need to debug it. So some of these things are available to us, such as the website, the Twitter link. Now we have a better understanding here of what's happening. So you can see here that Subbom gave us some JSON data. We looked at previously as a regular JSON payload and we're able to extract the column information from that. In this, we're getting an array of objects. You can map this similarly to the other one where you can map this to a new column in our table. Since we have a list there, like an array, we can actually write this data to another table. So we can create a new table here so we can examine a bit more in details the founders that's part of these companies. Just cl click on the data again and let's go to this detailed cell view and then we can go to that array and write data to another table. We can say I want this to be the founders and then you can set that new table to be mapped into the the properties of that array the, the objects such as the name we can pull the, the name the type the image uh, the types and the summary and there's some other stuff here if you want to add um, additional uh, data that's not uh, automatically being pulled in uh, let's remove that and there's some run settings here if you, if you want to run this export every time this column changes it's going to automatically just update the new table with fresh data. So you can set that as an option as well. And then you save and run it across all the records that we have here. Let's do that. And save. So now at the bottom, you can see that table founders has been added. All right, so you can click on that one or you can go back into the main page where now you're gonna see the founders right here. You can go to that new table. So you can see that the, the founder's name has been added here. So there's a person type, the summary, this is CEO of Squarespace, and then this is the person. And now you can extract some of this information into your CRM tool and you can reach out to this person. So let's add a use AI here. Let's click on that use AI and let's take advantage of the custom prompt here. So right now they only have two things as far as AI and machine learning. One is to classify text into categories. So you can have a list of categories and you can use it to classify certain things based on certain options that you have. Another option here is, is you can create a custom prompt where you can use uh, any of your columns uh, as part of your prompt that you're gonna be creating. So if I want to write an icebreaker for this, this, uh, this person, let's say I wanna reach out to one of the founders and I want to write a, an icebreaker so to introduce myself Hey, I'm this person and I know that you can provide this information. I know that you're into this. I know that you're the founder of uh, Facebook, blah, blah, blah. So you have this additional context that we can use in this table to write this prompt. So let's write an icebreaker. Email to, and then now we can do a curly brace and then we can now select the name and then use and the summary, that would be the summary. Now we can use the summary, use summary as context for starting the conversation. And then the person know that we would like to sit down for a coffee. I don't know, something like that. Let's just do that. Let's save and install. And this is gonna create a new column for us. We say it's gonna be named result. Obviously you can rename this to icebreaker. It's gonna be a long text. So that's gonna be just icebreaker here. That's gonna be the name of the field. And we can run this all across the board. So let's just try it out for one of these. Actually, it went again, run it for all. So you can see that it's starting running an email or icebreaker for these individuals. So now you can see, hi Anthony, I hope this email finds you well. As the CEO at Squarespace, your innovative literature has been truly inspiring. I would love to connect over a coffee. So it was able to just make the connection using the summary and the name of the person as the founder. So that's how you use the custom prompt here to build that column if you want to use the AI feature. Let's take a look at the sharing feature. Actually, let's take a look at the actions first. You can clear the table. You can remove duplicates if you have some duplicate records. You can click on any of these options and also the sharing feature. So let's take a look at this for now. 
So from here, you can download into any of these formats. So CSV or an Excel format, if you want to download it that way and then be able to import it into your CRM. If you want to just do it and manually import it that way, you can do it as well. Another option that you can also do is you can do a chart as part of this. There's really no visualization that we need for this, but let's just take a look at how this works, the visualization tool. It will bring up this option where you can set the chart options here. You can set the styles, how the plot looks like, the traces. This is where you bring in the different data set. You can specify the type of chart that you want, like a bar chart or any of these options. So you can see here the line chart, you have an area chart and the heat map. If you have like the longitude and longitude. So you can set those ones and we can set it from the data source. So right now I can set it to the X axis to the CEO name. So it's really not, nothing to visualize here in this but data, but I just want to show you the, the visualization option here. So let's go back and go back here to the table. So that's the visualization part of it. You can also send this data to a custom API. So you can send and stream this, or you can also send it to Google Sheet. So this will create a new worksheet. And this is like a one-time export to Google Sheet. And it's going to create a worksheet for you with the existing data. So this is a pretty simple option that you can take. Another one that you can also do is you can access this, this table via an API. So you can, you know, it will provide you with uh, this API right here where it includes the API key. You can copy this, you can use it for any tools that you're using out there. I'm going to put this in Postman and just see how it looks like. I can see the data that's being uh, sent back from here, uh, the icebreaker, the updated at, the row status, the name, all the different columns that I have set for that table, including the total count, how many records I have in that table and how many pages I have. So if there's multiple pages, I can literally use this API to pull in data for my automation, like on a daily basis, I can automatically run this in the jobs to automatically populate it with records. And I can have automation uh, running every day to pull in the data into my Google Sheets or anywhere else. Let's go take a look at how that can possibly work. So using active pieces right here, I have an automation setup where it would be running on a daily basis. And I have a data bar key set as part of my storage ready. And I can pull from that API from data bar. I can set it to any of the data bar endpoints available. And each table will have its own specific API endpoint and I can pull that data. So this is what a data would look like when I retrieve it. But you can see here the, the body, the same thing that we looked at earlier. We can see the page, the total count, and also the data. So you can have the array of record here. The sample that I was working previously was uh, meant for finding realtors within my area. So here's the data that I've gotten with address and all that information. So now I can push this data into a table or Google Sheets. I can do that by checking if there's any existing contact that already contains a name and then just adding that contact information into Google Sheets. That's one way of automating this. So if you want to run this job on a daily or weekly basis, if you just want to automate uh, this process as part of your system, uh, you can do something like this where you're going to be running something like this either from Zapier or make.com. You can use that API to just pull the data and do your synchronization, do some checking whether that record already exists. If, and if it's brand new, then you can go and push that data in, otherwise skip that record. So you can, you can do a little bit of checking uh, to make sure you're not adding uh, duplicate records as part of your CRM or whatever database that you have. So let's go back to data bar here. So I went ahead and show you the visualization. I went ahead and show you the CSV and Excel download is pretty much a straightforward process. Another one that also want to take a look at is the HubSpot integration. So I have a HubSpot here that I already have connected. So I, I believe it's connected to one of my, my tables already. So let's take a look at that one. It's already pinned it right here. So this one is one of the examples that I have. So I have a, a HubSpot right here. So imagine having a HubSpot account already with contacts already in place. I already have Elon, Greg uh, Brockman, and Andre have their email address. So you can connect your HubSpot quite easily. You can go to share, and then you can go down to HubSpot and just connect it and create a new connection based on the contacts. So you can either create or update based on the comp company records, or you can create or update based on contacts. I'm using the update HubSpot 
contacts. So I can click on this column right here, which is the one that's connected to right now. So I can synchronize this whole thing and push it uh, to HubSpot uh, by, by clicking on this one right here, or I can push per record. I just pushed one and I believe you might have to refresh this. All right, so I just push Sam Altman as part of that. Yeah, I just push Sam Altman. Let's push the Rimba. So, and gives you a timestamp here. Now go back to HubSpot. So you can imagine the workflow. So having to have the, the founders or any of the contacts populated here in data bar, you can sync it into your HubSpot account. You can synchronize it into a Google Sheet manually one time, or you can do some automation where you can push the entire data set within a table and push it anywhere you want to, to a table or Google Sheets or uh, whatever CRM that you have available out there. You can set it up however you want. All right. So one thing that I want to show you guys as well is this exporter option. So we learned about um, enrichment uh, from uh, within an existing data source. I was able to show you how to do a an enrichment based on a custom API that you already have. One thing that I haven't shown you yet is the exporter feature where you're going to be pushing data to a custom API. So the way we're going to be doing that is you can create a new exporter. Uh, you can do that by doing a share and send this to a, a custom API. And then you can create a new connector here. So you can see that the only export that I have is showing up here but you can always add a new exporter. So the way to do that is similar to how you do it with enrichment. Uh, instead of the enrichment, you will pick the exporter here, a data sender, and then you will set this typically to, you would do a post here. You have to a connector name here to uh, specify what uh, this uh, exporter is. So you can set the path here for the API URL, send in some parameters, some header information if you have some authentication, or if you want to pass in the content type, you can also pass in the body, which will require you to pass in additional information so that you can push for certain data. Let's check out active pieces here and let's check out the data exporter that I've added here. I just added a webhook, which this is essentially is sending in the ID, the job link, the job title, location, and the company name. The most important thing here is the ID. Uh, the job link is not really any in any significant because it's not really giving us the actual link to the website. So I'm going to be showing you guys how it works and how we can set the actual job link to Indeed just by using the ID here. If you go to the actual Indeed website and if you click on any of these jobs, it's not opening up a new page. So you're going to have to figure out how to open and navigate to this actual listing. So that's a little bit of tr tricky about this is that everything is a single page at this point. So for, for some reason, I was able to stumble upon this and you can see here that the pattern here, it goes to this uh, view job URL, which has this uh, JK uh, equals and then this ID, right? So I did a little bit of testing and I was able to figure out that the actual ID here is the one that we get back when we do a web scrape from Indeed. So this is going to be the URL that we're going to be specifying when we assemble this URL in ActiPieces. So let's go back into the data exporter here in ActiPieces. So the only thing that we really need is just the ID. And then we're going to be doing a find records here to just check if that record already exists. If it doesn't exist, it's going to go and create a record. It's a pretty straightforward process from here. We're just mapping the ID that we have here. Let's go ahead and go back to a table. So you can see that there's an ID, uh, the company name. So the ID would be the actual Indeed job listing ID and then the company name, location and the job link. So, but you can see the job link will actually contain the correct URL for that job listing. If you go ahead and click on this one, it will actually go to that actual listing for that job. So we're able to uh, circumvent the default URL by assembling our own URL by using that ID. And then we're inserting the job title as well. So that's kind of the makeup of the AA table. Let's go back into the data exporter here in AA table. So 
what we're doing here is we're just concatenating the view job and then a question mark JK equals to the ID that we receive back from data bar. And then the job title would be the job title. So it's pretty straightforward process. Are we also getting the current date for some reason? I don't know why we need this for, but I believe we're setting it here so that we can send it back into as a date here. So I believe this one should be here. Um, it's always available regardless of where it goes. So the current date should always be here and then return date. We're just returning the, the date. It doesn't really matter in this case, since data bar is not doing anything with this data or we need to figure out how this data is being utilized. So the only thing that ma really matters is we're pushing the data and we're able to push that data into this AI table by using the exporter webhook. So once you've filled out all this information, so you're going to go ahead and put the body, put the URL and the connector name. Those are the required field. And then make sure that uh, you specify the exporter data sender here. And once you do that, you're going to have the ex exporting, which you can use. So I already had it already, I already specified as one of the columns. So it works similarly as the data enrichment. So where it actually is going to be setting into that column and you can fire up that the entire columns or you can just fire it up for individual records so right now i have two records in my a table so i want to fire up that uh, job uh, scraper exporter by just clicking on one of these and just running it now so you can see that it's running and we can go and go to a table so hopefully we'll pick it up pretty soon so after a few seconds the new job is here apple retino and then software developer engineer and let's go into the Apple. So let's go ahead and navigate to this link, check that it's actually the correct one. So it looks like it's the correct one. That's how the exporter works and how to set it up inside of data bar. One thing that I, I want to show you guys is to start with the data from the Chrome extension web scraper tool. This is actually pretty cool. I want to show it to you guys as part of this demonstration as well. So let's go ahead and go to uh, LinkedIn. I have this LinkedIn page. So I have to make sure that you install the Chrome extension for data bar. You can go to the Chrome store and install this web extension. You can search by data bar and you have to install this easy web scraper by data bar. And then I already have it installed. Just make sure that you have it installed and then you have it pinned into your toolbar. So I currently have it pinned already. So you're going to see this icon right here where you can click on it and it says scrape this page. The only time this web scraper is useful if you're scraping a list of records since a data bar is meant for a collection of records that's the type of records that you're going to be scraping so you're not going to be scraping about a specific job so let's take a look at how this works we can go to this page such as the one that i have here you can see the job title and then there's the company information and some other stuff here so let's fire the chrome extension by clicking on it and scraping on this page it will bring up some of these elements on the screen, such as the add column and the view results. So we want to add a column here. And then this will change when you drag your, your mouse across the screen. So you will have to find the data where it's not red. So if it's red, that means it's not going to be scraping it. So you don't have to be subtle in how you, you pick your elements. This is probably fine. So it's able to pick up all these different things. So I'm gonna have to refresh this just to make sure that I get all the records on this page. So let's go ahead and scroll down to the bottom first. And then let's go and fire up the data bar uh, extension once again. And let's go ahead and add a column. So so red is no, I have to move it up a little bit. And yeah. So now I was able to pick up all the different uh, positions for this. It's 24 is, uh, items selected here. I can hit on this check mark and that would set it for that column. I can add an additional column as well. So let me go ahead and go to the top and let's just capture the company of this job position who's hiring. Let's go ahead and click on this one and this will capture the company all the way down. So you can see that the first column, the, the amount of items between the first column and the second column matches. So there's 24 and 24. That's always a good sign. That means that there's records for each of those. And you can uh, just click on the check mark. So I think that's that for now. And we can also double click and say this one's going to be the actual position or job position. Just go with job position. And then this one would be the 
company. Let's go ahead and do that. And then you can view the results. So after you have all the columns, uh, results, you can go ahead and view the results. I have the job position and the company scraped. So each of these have individual results. And now I can go and download the CSV or I can send this to data bar so I can further refine this. So now you can see that I need to authorize. So I need to go back to my data bar. Uh, I can go back to integrations here and just copy my integrations API key, go back to the new window and authorize it. And then now I can go back and send this to data bar. It's going to bring this records into data bar. So now I can add additional data enrichment or I can refine this even more, add more columns into this so I can do whatever I want. Now it's exact records that I created via the web scraping Chrome extension, which is pretty nice. So I thought I would just show you guys how that works. So it's a quite a pretty useful tool if you just want to start your table using an existing website that you might have in mind. So I think that wraps it up for this video. It's getting too long. Thanks for sticking it out and getting this far in this video. So if you like this type of content, please go ahead and consider subscribing to my channel and clicking like and all that. I would also encourage you to go ahead and join my school community where you can learn more about this type of technology and learn about AI automation. So like always, I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye.